AFCON primarily is a membership organisation that looks after tr the training of financial counsellors in New South Wales and providing ongoing training and advanced training for financial counsellors to keep them upskilled and advocate on behalf of people who are in financial crisis. We give people options. So we provide information so they can make an informed choice about where they want to go. Basically financial accounting is about trying to help people cope with sometimes inadequate money, sometimes they get themselves into a whole lot of debt for a whole lot of different reasons and we try to actually extricate them from that debt or help them in any way we can. Financial counsellors are very good advocates for their clients. Financial counsellors can really sit down and work out with them a realistic plan, uh, negotiate with the company for payment. Uh, and do a lot of the work that an ombudsman would do across a whole range of services. Financial counselling benefits clients tremendously if we can just help them get a handle on managing their money. The whole idea about financial counselling is empowering the clients to solve their own financial problems and I think that's where the challenge is that we try to assist them solve their problem rather than going and solving their problems and, and that's something which actually excites me a bit excites me a lot. The most important outcome is that the people feel listened to. A lot of people have, as I said, great difficulty talking to their friends or colleagues about the fact that they can't manage their money. It's not something that you want to openly admit to. So actually, if they go to see a counsellor, you can sit down with someone that, that clearly understands the situation you're in, has some assistance and tools to assist you get out of the situation. Even, the, even sometimes it may well be just to confirm the fact that they're doing the best they can, that I'm having difficulty managing my money, and you, you give them a tap on the back and say, well, I'd have difficulty managing on $800 a fortnight too. I don't know how you actually do it. Perhaps you can try these skills or that skill. So it's not always about, it's reinforcing some of the behaviour and sometimes helping them change the behaviour. Well, normally the client will ring up. We will say, look, can you bring this, 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 like a bank statement, any forms, the letter, whatever you've got about this debt or this problem. So once the appointment's been made and they come to see me, uh, then I allow them to tell me their story. There's always a story behind what's happening to somebody. And we also look at their history on our notes and might say, well, you've come in you know, every three months, which is as often as they can come in. So that tells us there's a bit of a deeper problem in terms of how far your money goes and how you manage to pay your bills. And then we go through looking at their financial situation as a whole. So we look at the income and expenses, we look at what their debts are, we look at um, what their statement of net worth, their assets and liabilities. That gives a total picture then of their financial situation. And once we've assessed where they're at and where they might be heading to, we can start to develop some options with them. Uh, oftentimes they come up with some of the options. So we're able to work with them to do a budget, which is just one fortnight at a time to start with, but also to encourage them to link into the Centrelink Centre Pay so that they're putting aside money for their electricity, their water and their telephone before the bills even come in. Financial literacy is more to uh, teach cli uh, clients how to draft up a uh, money plan and to be able to see what is their income, what is their expenses, where all the money is going to, whether they have a deficit at the end of the day or sometimes they may have a surplus as well. We interact on behalf of the client with the creditors, we work out payment arrangements for them, have yeah, and in many cases, uh, for my target audience, it also becomes uh, simpler to get debts wavered. Uh, we are also confronted with a lot of uh, clients who require early access to superannuation and, uh, and issues that are in and around uh, maybe facing death or settling matters which are related to a terminal disease. Our role in wasn't working with creditors is basically to um show them what the situation is, why they've got themselves into that position, and this is the way that we can help them work out of it. Would you be prepared to work with us along this, along this uh, path? We refer a lot of customers who are in really deep trouble, financial trouble, uh, to financial counsellors because they really need that service to have a look at all their debts, what can they realistically pay, because there's nothing worse than an energy company insisting on an unrealistic and unaffordable payment arrangement because it'll fall over. So we rely on financial counsellors looking across all of their finance, all of their circumstances, and we trust their judgement in terms of the plan that they might come back with. Some people think that we only see really poor people, but we see 
um, a wide range of people. Some of the people that I've had are like failed business ventures um, and you know people that have just been recently divorced or um, ha have had to um, had a retirement um, an early retirement because of you know funding cuts. It could be a long term or a short term thing. Um, someone's died, accidentally gotten pregnant, anything that can change your current status quo. Basically anyone with a financial matter, problem, uh, something they just want to talk about of a financial nature, they can contact a financial counsellor. Everybody is susceptible to financial counselling depending on what happens to them in their life. We all think we're fin uh, financial wizards, so we can manage uh, most of the stuff on our own. But at some point of time, the ground reality is if one of us can lose a job, okay, then you come and hit rock bottom in terms of your financial planning and that's what happened to me. Uh, for the first time in my 30 years of career, I found uh, on the wrong side of the job market and uh, for a whole year I was struggling. When you enter UCMH and you see all those posters there, alcoholism, gambling and uh, you know all of that and you say, how come I've landed here? But uh, the very first few questions she was able to set me at ease and I knew that it was far beyond you know plain counselling but ability to set a road map and you know try and uh, get to a point of decision making so that you could take firm decisions not just as an individual but as a family and and then she was also able to deal with you know assure us that she would be dealing with some of our creditors therefore uh, quickly passed from you know being diffident and uh, less confident to being very sure about what was happening well, I didn't have much money at all, and because I got some money, uh, about 40,000, when I got retrenched, and it came as a surprise, the retrenchment, and then I didn't get uh, any uh, help from the government for about nine, nine and a half months because of that $40,000. So I was paying money, rent and everything like that with that money. So basically I had nothing, so I had to look for some help. Well, I rang up and I got, a, got an appointment, and I saw her, and uh, basically uh, I went there very nervously. And uh, you know, from the first visit itself, I knew that there was light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, I was uh, under a lot of stress. Um, you know, I was going to sleep worrying about my finances, uh, waking up worrying about it, um, till I uh, went to the first meeting and uh, um, we went through everything, my finances, uh, just week after week uh, the finance stopped calling me. Where you've got a financial problem, we also there is also some form of a social problem, a relationship problem, etc. So basically our role is to address that and say, well okay, perhaps, you know, we can work with your financial side of things, but you perhaps need to see another professional to sort out the other social issues that you're experiencing at this stage. We're running a money link project where we liaise between emergency relief workers and financial counsellors to make sure they're referring to each other. This project is about trying to make those links and about trying to make those networks and, and bringing some understanding to those various people um, about what each other does and how we can best help any particular individual in the community. Well, Money Link is an opportunity to try and spread the information about the role of a financial counsellor and how they can assist someone who's in financial crisis and helping people who are working in the emergency relief sector. Money Link is trying to provide them with some skills and hands-on tools to make their job a little bit simpler. We have a suite of emergency relief services and we call them sustainable living. So it started with emergency relief, people coming in for bills and for food parcels and we thought that that was really band-aiding a little bit so we wanted to do something more useful for people and so we added to that our financial counselling program, an accommodation support program, no interest loans, step up loans and a capacity building program. I mean to top everything you know to coming to a new country generally a lot of clients are very unfamiliar with the systems that you know work in in a country like Australia so a lot of the time we find ourselves that we're linking clients to other services that they may um, benefit from. I think financial counselling benefits our organisation because if we can help people get on track track with their money, then they're not coming in for emergency relief the way they used to. It means other people can come in for emergency relief. Uh, always finances for charities are tight, and so the more we can help people get a handle on their finances, then the more people we can help. We have lots of, of success stories, as I'd call them, where people have come in sometimes fortnight after fortnight for quite a few months until they've finally got it right. It's a sense of relief that they've been able to discuss it with someone. 
and what they thought was a, um, a, a serious matter may not be a serious matter and they may have options um, available to them. And there was a great sense of relief, it was like a big weight uh, pulled out, primarily because now I could go back to my bankers and say, look, we met, we met the councillors and the other reason being is it was not just uh, a short term uh, kind of uh, arrangement to save you from the, uh, from the bankers, but also to put a plan in place that would then help you to traverse the journey of you know, financial intelligence. Things can get better. There, there is light at the end of the tunnel that you're not out there doing it on your own. To have someone, it's a bit like having a conversation with someone that understands your situation, whether it's financial or otherwise, you feel as though a problem shared is a problem halved. So if you're talking to someone, it makes it easier. And I think that's how our role, whole role as a financial counsellor is one of empowerment, is of teaching them skills so that they can manage themselves without our assistance. Right? And that way, and that's the great joy about the work that we do, is to be able to see people actually achieving that and saying, wow, I didn't realise I could do this, thanks very much, and off they go. And for a lot of them, we never see them again.